Buster. Pig. I could see Max, Eddie's father, heading toward the truck while Eddie was still underneath it. Yes, yes, putting the screw in place. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I should have taken all the variables into consideration. The stuff that, uh, no, no, you can't control or predict, like behavior by other animals. Max was angry. He barked at Eddie. Just what on earth do you think you're doing, son? I thought that Eddie might crumble, getting yelled at by his dad, and the plan would be ruined. Oh dear. Before I realized what I was doing, I opened the gate to my pen and rushed over. Eddie wasn't backing down, though. No, no, no. He, uh, he stood up to Max. He said, I'm doing what I have to do. I'm doing what needs to be done. Eddie had never spoken to his father like that before. I think it surprised Max. Put him back on his heels. Max wasn't yelling now so much as pleading. He said, we have a job here, son. We work for Farmer. You have to put your feelings aside. Eddie. Dog. I told Dad that I couldn't, not when it concerned Audrey. Gosh, I could have said a lot more, too. I could have told him about friendship and love and doing what's right, yes siree. But I didn't because, well, jeepers creepers, why should someone have to explain those things? They just are. They're inside all of us. And if someone can't feel them, how the heck can you even start to make them understand? Buster. Pig. Now, Eddie was supposed to jump in through the window on the driver's side so he could, uh, yes, put the gear shift into neutral. That way the truck would be free to move when we pushed it and we could get the tire on top of the screw. But if, uh, if Eddie moved away from the tire, then Max could have at it. Max said, I won't let this continue any further. He was just about to dive under the truck, but before he knew it, before I knew it, I was there blocking his way. Yes, yes I was. Can you believe it? I was standing up to Max, too. I was awesome. Eddie. Dog. Out of nowhere, Buster appears. All 300 pounds of him. He nudges Dad to the side and plants himself in front of the truck. Well, like a giant pink boulder. Dad's not sure what to do. Does he try to slip around Buster or chew his way through him? I couldn't hang around to find out. I had to trust that Buster could handle it. So I snuck around to the other side and signaled for my assistant to follow me into the cab. Buster. Pig. Why did Eddie need an assistant? Well, because in order to move the gear shift, you, uh, yes, yes, you have to perform two operations at the same time. It's easy for humans, but not so easy for us. Who did he have to help him? Um, do you really need to know? Charlton. Brewster. I would be delighted to enlighten you in regards to the heroics that I, Charlton III, did humbly perform on that illustrious day. You see, when I heard the desperate whispers riding the breeze concerning the escape by one poor forlorn cow, whose name presently eludes me, well, I naturally did not wait on ceremony for the concerned parties to come and beg my assistance. Why, that would be unconscionable. I thrust myself in front of those ragtag desperados and declared, Charlton III is at your service. I dare say they were speechless, and that was quite understandable. Had I been in their hooves and paws, I would have been stupefied and in awe of what stood before me, too. You see, I was a game changer, a deus a machina, as the Romans would call it. The odds for success had spiked from zero, no chance, to 99.9% yes chance. That was allowing for one-tenth percent failure rate on the remote possibility that I should be struck down by a wayward meteor and rendered unable to complete my mission. How fortunate that cow, Amy was it? How fortunate that she was that, how fortunate she was that I was there in the nick of time to save Mandy? Uh, 
no matter, to save that poor cow's life. It's all true, as enthusiastic but grossly unqualified Eddie even said to himself, Charlton, we need you in the clutch. Eddie. Dog. No, what I said to Charlton was that I needed him on the clutch. Jeepers. A clutch is a pedal that humans press down with their foot while changing gears. And the only reason I asked Charlton, because he caught wind of our plans early on. And he's such a big mouth we were worried that he might spill the beans to Dad or start crowing at the wrong time during the escape and draw farmer's attention. I used him where it seemed less likely for him to mess things up. And he was fine at first, managing to flap up and join me in the cab. Meanwhile, I see Roy heading toward the back of the truck. I tell Charlton to stomp down hard on the clutch while I bite down on the gear shift ready to move it. But Charlton isn't doing the one simple thing he's supposed to do. Jeepers creepers. Instead, he starts shouting out some crazy speech. Charlton. Rooster. Why, yes, indeed I do remember every word of my soliloquy. I said, they will talk of this day for years to come. Our names pass down from generation to generation. If we who go bravely into war should die upon the battlefield, let our actions not be in vain. Carry the torch ever onward for General Buster, for much too young Eddie, for valiant and noble and handsome Charlton. And let us not forget our dear, dear sister. Let us not forget dear, dear, uh, is it Daphne? Eddie. Dog. Jump on the clutch, I barked. I can hear Farmer and the driver coming out of the cow shed with Audrey. Charlton, jump on the clutch now.